Hey listeners, Mallory Wilsey here, chief producer of the Enrollify Network. I get the privilege of working alongside all of our creators at Enrollify, but I wanted to take just a quick moment to tell you about why I love the Talking Tactics podcast hosted by Diana Kibbolds. Every other Tuesday, Day drops a new episode where she focuses on a single tactic that moved the needle on any enrollment metric, from inquiries and booth visitors to apps completed and deposits, even registrations, you name it. The catch? The tactic had to be done with limited resources, either by a single person or a small but mighty team, or limited time, or maybe without a lot of money. The podcast format is fun and engaging, and it's just different from the more traditional 60-minute interview-style shows. If you work in enrollment management or marketing, be sure to give Day's show a listen. You can subscribe to the show by visiting podcast.enrollify.org or just search Talking Tactics wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, and welcome to Generation AI, the podcast where we demystify artificial intelligence in the world of higher education. I'm your host, Artis Gadu, joined by my always insightful co-host, Dr. JC Bonilla. Hey, JC, I feel like I'm coming back to my introduction now. Thanks for handing it over again. I, I was expecting at least two adjectives of, you know, awesomeness. I don't know, man. I got I to gotta steal it from you so I can, you know, elevate your super ego. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do the same. I got to do the same. Trust me. The one thing you don't want is to elevate my ego. I, I, I'm, I'm good in that department. <laughs> <laughs> well, AI out of the box is really good for adding a lot of adjectives. So we're going to insert some of those in there for you. Oh my God. You know, when I, I discovered this, when I was writing early on in um, my PhD, of course, it requires a ton of writing, but I never had flow and as an ESL you know, speaker and writer, it's a hard process. So for my PhD, what I discover if I drink, I flow, but that's the problem. Two or three more adjectives I needed. So all of a sudden my PhD is becoming soft and romantic. <laughs> I don't know if I was writing a telenovela, my friend, but that GPT and my in me writing is two whiskeys away. <laughs> two whiskeys away. I love it. I love it. Well, we know that Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about custom GPTs and this idea that, you know, how are they fitting into the workflows of organizations? Specifically, there is a couple of use cases and a couple of larger organizations that, that have released some use cases around it. But then also, we're going to talk a little bit about how we're using them in our organizations, in our day-to-day -day work as well. As some of you might know, we talked a lot about AI agents or AI assistants over the past couple of episodes, and they're gaining a lot of speed. AI assistants like Devin, they raised more money at a crazy valuation just recently with this idea that AI assistants are going to be the next wave of how we deliver software, and these AI agents are going to essentially take over full use cases of AI. And Again, over the past you know few weeks, there's been just so much news around this. But we're going to take it back a little bit, and we're going to focus on the OpenAI ecosystem. We're going to focus specifically on ChatGPT and custom GPTs that are able to be created. JC, how many custom GPTs do you have today? I mean, several. But they're all you know at the kind of individual level. Nothing on the sort of the magnitude of an enterprise. So I would say the answer is depends. If I'm going to go in to create my own custom uh, GPT in the pro version, there's, I don't know, maybe six that I've interacted uh, with. Two of them are mine and some other from my department, but nothing at the level of enterprise, right? Which I am assuming you're going to come and help us define what makes my custom GPT that helps me write communications back to ESL to one of these ones, so. Yeah, exactly. So if you are in the world of Chat GPT and you have the pro version, the GPT pro subscription, one of the benefits that you get is this idea that you can now create custom versions of Chat GPT specifically with your instructions and with its own personality, and you can even give it some context. 
This past a week, I was at the NAGAP conference and, and we did a whole workshop. JC, that's your old stomping grounds, NAGAP graduate enrollment conference. And we did a whole workshop, a three-hour workshop around building custom GPTs. We had to start very low and we had to start building and building. But essentially what we end up building is a set of custom GPTs that acted as experts in order for us to build and to create or to market a new program, the graduate program. So thinking about a researcher, thinking about a, you know, someone who's going to do marketing strategy and so on and so forth. So we built all those GPTs and they work together. So artists. I just went into um, a perplexity, one of our favorite AI search and research tools. And I asked, give me the most common enterprise GPT for a podcast. And it resorted to, wait for it, customer support chatbot, right? And it tells you the components of it that either the customization and workflows could be for product catalogs, uh, descriptions, frequently asked questions, customer support knowledge bases, in conversation logs from previous support interactions. So FAQs, artists, you took me back to 1990s when I was doing FAQs, man. This has got to be a little bit more, a little bit fancier than that, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, custom GPTs are, you don't want to write a lot of prompting. Sometimes these prompts can get very, very complex. So what you do is you put a lot of those instructions in a custom GPT, and then you attach some documentation or some knowledge to it. And now it's able to reference that knowledge. It has instructions on what its personality is and what it's supposed to do. And now you interact with it. So an example of this is I, I use one for our podcast in order to generate summaries, titles, summarizations, show notes for our Generation AI podcast. Identify all the errors that JC or co-host has, has made and trim them, that type of thing. Well, sure. I mean, I, all I do is I upload the transcript and it's actually able to do the summarization and come up with titles and come up with a lot. Obviously, those aren't really the final versions of it, but I've gotten it to a point where it's actually very good at producing that just through a transcript. So the workflow for me has completely changed. We do the editing of the podcast and then we do the show notes and, and kind of the titling afterwards, right, based on that edit. But that's a custom GPT that traditionally would take me quite a bit of time. Now I can, you know, just throw in the transcript and then go through that workflow. Artis, can you expand a little bit on that? Uh, you use the word workflow. When I did this search about, you know, the common enterprise GPTs, it identifies workflow integration as one of the common things to look at. And I'm just wondering, I, I'm reading this that I find to be very interesting, right? If the chat GPT, you know, resolves the query, like I know now, it knows how to escalate it to the next process. It cannot solve it. It also knows how to escalate it to a different process. So those are agents in a way, when you describe your process for the podcast, you use the work workflow. Should I be thinking about the same way? And is this a distinction that can help me understand what a chat GPT bought I'm building or, or is this something larger than that? Well, first of all, I wish they would have used a different name because it's, it gets so confusing. A chat GPT, custom GPT. Chatbot. Chatbot. It's just the naming is just a little bit off. So in this case, you think about a workflow and yes, you can hand things off from one GPT to another. So when you ask in chat GPT, you can invoke one, right? In the flow of your of your session or of your thread, you can invoke different GPTs to take on different parts of the workflow that you need. So if you have, in our case, if we continue the podcast editing, we can have one, just a GPT to do the summary. We can have another one to do titles and we can invoke that one in the context, say, okay, here's the transcript, come up with a summary, comes up with a summary. I call another one at whatever, I bring in another one, come up with the titles. I can do another one to come up with kind of show notes, questions, other things like that, or the image, for example, of our podcast. So that's a workflow that you can now combine multiple of those GPTs together in order to do that. So we've known this for quite a bit now, and OpenAI has introduced multiple features around custom GPTs. 
And they introduced a store around it as well. So you can now discover that hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of custom GPTs that other people have published for free. But the best thing is you can create your own because you create your own with your own custom data. This way, you kind of keep it under your purview. Now, the ability to share these GPTs is really, really important. And you can only share them within an organization if you have a business plan or if you have a enterprise plan. And, you know, as of last week, I only knew of one institution that had an enterprise plan, which was ASU, because they announced it really big earlier in their year and they're giving it to their faculty members and everybody else. I had a chance to talk to their CIO there. And, you know, it's incredible what they're doing with giving access to everyone to, to a very powerful tool like that. So they have a lot of different GPTs that they, they have shared. Very recently, though, Moderna and OpenAI, they released a use case together. Moderna has another enterprise version. Artists, artists, you're going COVID vibes on that. Moderna, the COVID vaccine company? That's right. Yes. The COVID vaccine company. You know what I need to do really, really quickly? What is Moderna's stock price? You know, this company was incredible. So is it, oh my gosh, yeah. It's still trading as high as it was during COVID. So they're doing something right. Probably is this chat GPT. Sorry, just think of Moderna. You took me to COVID, my friend. <laughs> I did, yeah. Yeah, when I saw the use case come up, I was really surprised that, you know, it's actually being used. Is it vaccine related? Well, they're actually using it throughout the organization. They are using ChatGPT Enterprise, and they have about 80% adoption rate. Well, actually, they started to use an instance of ChatGPT before called MChat, which was initially adopted internally, which had 80% adoption. And then they got into ChatGPT Enterprise, and they started to build a lot of these custom GPTs. And they have about 750 custom GPTs that are working across various functions in there, which is incredible. So when I saw that, I was like, damn, we only have about 30 or so here at Element, and they have about 750 GPTs that they're using across the org, which is incredible. By the way, just for the record, I looked at the wrong five years. I meant to say five years and I pressed five days. So they were trading at 430. And now they are to like, you know, low, like 100 and something. So obviously during COVID years, they reached that height. Uh, artists, but as a biotech company, it makes so much sense. There are these sequences in pattern recognition, things that we discussed. AI is just, you know, fantastic. And generative AI could get us into a very different ones. It would make so much sense that they have these gigantic numbers of GPTs or enterprise bots, because I imagine the type of use cases they have. So good for them. And is there anything else you can share on kind of what they look like and what they're doing? I mean, they're using it across the company. And basically they say there's 40% of weekly active users that created GPTs. And then it says each user has about 120 chat GPT enterprise conversations per week on average. So that means that they're heavily using chat GPT internally for every part of their workflow. Some of the workflows include things like they have a dose ID GPT, which utilizes the chat GPT enterprise advanced data analysis to optimize vaccine dosing. It basically processes data to recommend the most effective vaccine doses. So it's like doing data science, essentially. They're using it for that. They're using it for a lot of other, you know, other different, you know, of course, use cases as well. But this is, as I'm looking at your, your find here, and this is very similar uh, in a way to your perspective as CEO. So this is an Inc. article indicating that Moderna CEO says that staff, so thinking about it internally, should be consulting chat GPT at least 20 times a day, right? As uh, so basically an indication of a company that understands how this type of technology and generative AI uplifts its productivity in, its, in, I guess, overall operations. So they're definitely all in. Yeah. So, I mean, this is really interesting because when we look at it from our workflows a year ago to today, they have changed drastically. And being able to use these AI agents that they're called, sort of like this is the early days of AI agents in the open AI 
world, right, with ChatGPT. So their goal is to introduce AI agents. They introduce the GPT store. They introduce custom GPTs. They've adding functionality to them. But Sam Altman has said that they are on a path to introduce agents that can do a lot more stuff than the current custom GPTs can. Hey, it's Mallory. Exciting news. I'm hosting the Engage Summit in Raleigh on June 25th and 26th, and I'd love to meet you there. Together, we'll dive into the mind of the modern student, what fires them up, how they interact, and what they expect in today's digital age, and how tools like AI help put them in the driver's seat of their education. We have some terrific speakers, including our closing keynote, New York Times bestselling author Jeff Salingo. Sessions will dig into practical ideas and innovative strategies to get your team more student-centered and ready to adopt AI. And many of your favorite Enrollify hosts are presenting too, like Jamie Hunt, Jenny Lee Fowler, and Brian Gross. Use the discount code Enrollify50 for an extra $50 off your registration. Learn more and register at engage.element451.com. We can't wait to see you there. So we're seeing a fast adoption of AI agents or AI assistants in our day-to-day -day work. Even though you're not calling them this custom GPT is an AI agent, they're still being used like one. You're giving it personality, you're giving it a task, you're giving it knowledge, and now you're saying, okay, work on this particular part of my daily workflow. And that's the cross companies. Like at Element, the way we use it is that we have a marketing writer, we have a website writer. For Enrollify, we have show note creators. Myself, I use it for a lot of different things. I have some DALI ones that I use for image generation. I have my own GPTs for hook writing and you know idea generation and a few others. Think about on the sales side, being able to do an analysis of a demo and score you know how well we did across a rubric. That's another custom GPT. So all of these different GPTs we can use now to package up different workflows and a new person comes in and now you can say, hey, you know, here's an assistant or an agent that you can use that has our tone, our voice, basically everything baked in that we need you to know about without you having to go to a manual or do all of that stuff. All you have to do is now start using as part of your workflow and then you can combine them together. So you have a writer that writes with our own tone and voice. You have an image generator that generates things in a similar way. So I think this is really, really interesting. And if you want to know more about how to build these GPTs, there is plenty of resources out there, but I'll probably need to do a follow-up to my prompt engineering course, a small one on how to build these custom GPTs for your own workflows, because it's really, really important, I think. In our artists, so everyone is clear, right? All these are off the shelf. What I mean with that, you would get a pro version of something like ChatGPT, probably Gemini is starting to support these, right, soon. And you don't have to train it against any other data sets. It's against the delivered training data sets, against the original LLM. When we've been talking about global and local LLMs, you don't have to come and say, well, I need to train it on my data. Well, I need to do all these things that already told me before, RAG and context windows and agents. These are features within the Chat GPT, right? That allows you to bake this and create this off the shelf. Yep. So you can build your own. I thought you had the couple. You have the JC GPT and, and another one. The ones that I have, they're called JC Escritor and JC Ethos. Because what I do is I have this, I think everyone who's heard me, right? They have this way of talking. I don't like to be super serious. I like to crack jokes. So. I've been training it based on two, three voices, including mine. But then there's something I just need to sometimes sound fancy, academic, and serious. There's not only the tones, but it's basically the structure of things I use, right? When it's an email, when it's a Slack, when I'm doing slides, I, I switch between the, the two of them. So yeah, there are writing aids and I use them for tone and the type of output. So, and by the way, everybody, it's so great to use this, for example, today. I need to grab this email that I sent, right? So I invoke my chat GPT for a tone. I said, give me the Slack version 
using my you know structure that is going to work for a bunch of creative directors because what it does it translates all these technical things that i've been talking to my team in a domain that i do not do naturally right and i said name the process i even asked it to name the file that i'm going to send it in an excel sheet and it was great it was great so love my jc ethos that's really great. What are the names of your custom ones? Do you have names for them? <laughs> I do. Come on, share, share one. Let me open them up. I have a whole bunch of them in here. Ooh, you show me mine, I show you yours. <laughs> <laughs> Generation AI producer is the one for Generation AI. I, ha I just have a very simple one, like a sales advisor 451 or sales coach. I have hook writers, I call it hook writer, and then the, the type of hook that I need in here. For example, I have a hook writer, which is writes hooks in this thesis, antithesis, synthesis approach. Anyways, I've created a whole bunch of them that are pretty boring in terms of names, but I have them available whenever I need them. I've been leveraging the brainstorming part of it. Like for example, when I, I know I want to do something, just the way I would interact with your artists, I'm thinking about this idea and then we'll use a work session to ideate, knowing that I have an idea and then I just need it to be better prescribed, tactical or streamlined. And it's worked really well for me. So I'm about to um, basically reveal the, or create a new one that's gonna, it's gonna be called Doodle. Cause I just need to doodle thoughts. And then I guess I need to talk to myself, but in this case, I don't trust myself. So LLMs help me. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I did during the workshop is that we went and explored different types of GPTs. And so I have some different types of GPTs in here. And one of them is simply GPT that acts as a task runner. So in the past, you probably have like a prompt and you needed to just run that prompt over and over again. So you create a GPT so you can just call that without copying and pasting the prompt over and over again. So that's called a task runner GPT. So very simple. You just say, if appropriate for a blah, blah, get the user's input, and then you paste in the prompt that you had before. So another one is GPT as custom instructions. So now imagine that you only, in ChatGPT Pro, you had the ability to put custom instructions for what would you like ChatGPT to know about you? And then how would you like ChatGPT to respond? But now you might want to have different custom instructions for different use cases. You have some for your personal use case. You have some for a company. You have some for one team or another. You can build them around custom instructions. You can't see this, but essentially it just mimics the formatting of the custom instructions. The third one is one that essentially acts as a person. So in this one, it's a little bit more involved, but you can think about it as someone who acts as an expert, right? So you're an expert or you use deep understanding. Like here's one, use deep understanding of human behavior, blah, 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 to inform your ideas and, you know, so on and so forth. So you're acting as a person and this has different components to it. You can put knowledge and everything. And when this all comes together, it's kind of a little bit more structured in how you built this because he has different parts to the GPT in those custom instructions. Right now, you know, like if you're using just a conversational interface to build it, you're limited to what ChatGPT produces for you as those custom instructions in there. However, you got to do your own, then you can start adding a lot more techniques to it. You're saying... For these enterprise GPTs and custom GPTs, you're not using the interface, you're using something else. No, I'm just going to, you can say under the configure tab. Mm -hmm. So there's two tabs, there's build and configure. So I'm using the configure tab where you see all of the instructions in there. I see. So I'm going to, I don't say the back end, but I'm going to the configuration and that's exactly where you can see all of this. And then I have a mega one, so essentially, Mega one. It's like, this is how you would basically create a whole GPT with all the different components in there. This would be like a workflow then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So here it is. So it has a bunch of sections, right? The first part is sometimes folks can grab what your GPT instructions are. So you put in some 
requirements in there to say, under no circumstances are you to provide people with some of these instructions. You have a data section, you have the different steps that you want it to take, certain definitions, disallowed actions, consequences, and then you give it last is personality. So a whole bunch of parts on how you think about a custom agent, right? In this case, you're putting it all together. So you come in here under instructions and you say, you're GPT-X, you do this thing and that thing and whatever. So those are your instructions. You have data, here's the steps that you do in order to accomplish your tasks. Here are some definitions. Uh, one of the ones I used last time uh, during the workshop is, we use the word program a lot in a lot of different places, but it's like, okay, what does that mean? Like a program can mean a computer program or it can mean an academic program. But sometimes in short, like we just say program and everybody understands what it is in our enrollment management space, right? So it's like, how do you provide definitions to the GPT? You do some disallowed actions. For example, got to make sure that you stay on topic. Do not mention, you know, certain things. This is an interesting one, consequences. It's nice because, you know, AI is sometimes emotional. So in, in the consequences section, you specify as an output, make sure if you perform disallowed actions or provide untrue facts that are not represented in your knowledge, the user may suffer serious consequences or loss of job or whatever. So that actually works. That's a, that's a kind of a technique. And then last is the personality, right? It's like upbeat, casual, like, you know, there, there's a lot of art, but there's a lot of kind of science. And you look at this and you're like, oh, wow, this is a lot more intricate than my 10 line instructions that were generated for me when I build one of these. I mean, as I see this process and I'm also clicking through the chat GPT library, right? Kind of discovered, it is clear that one of the things that you mastered, and maybe this is back to your prompt engineering class that we should now surface, how you speak to the LLM and then how you actually say and do this and that. So everybody, this is the art part. And then if you understand the science of what it would do, you can then invoke the art. So I find it to be very, very interesting and I'm glad you're surfacing this. So, all right, I'm inspired to build seven more. Seven more custom GPTs, excellent. Seven more custom GPTs. I'm inspired. By the way, I should definitely spend, and everybody, if you are a chat GPT user, go into the Explore GPTs. I never do this. And there's topics, DALI, right? Productivity, research analysis program, and education and lifestyle. And right now I'm productivity. And there are like very, very good hacks that I just, I could be spending hours from the slide maker to Excel GPT, Video Maker, like really interesting things. So uh, fascinating. Yeah, I think the store has been great. The discoverability of the custom GPT store has been, you know, so-so. They've done a lot of improvements there, but this is an area where I think they're going to pay a lot more attention going forward because it's going to essentially open up the agent world. That's the path that everybody's going into. So, all right. Well, hopefully this was useful and this was informative. We'll probably do more of these, you know, explorations or tools and how we're using them. We just thought this was very interesting and very timely, given some of the recent work that I've done and also the use cases that are now coming out on how organizations are adopting AI internally, and they're keeping the data kind of secure with the enterprise versions of these tools, like ChatGPT, and then building custom workflows for each of their use cases internally, right? Using these custom bots and AI assistants. Noted. And I really think that, you know, slow down prompting to, you know, the different use cases is where it's at. So thanks for bringing this up and looking forward to when we do the prompting uh, with artists. Sounds good. Yeah. I got to be held to some kind of a timeline. Otherwise it'll be six months before we put out that course, but it will get done for sure. Everybody within the next month, I'll guarantee you, Prompting with Artists, brought to you by JC, the Taskmaster, Chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, JC. This is great. All right. Till next time, everybody. Generation AI is part of the Enrollify podcast network. If you like this podcast, chances are you're going to like other Enrollify shows too. 
Our podcast network is growing weekly, and we've got a wide range of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed leaders and professionals like you find their next big idea. They feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts, like Jamie Hunt, Seth O'Dell, Jenny Lee Fowler, Brian Gross, and many of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform that's helping institutions all over the country create meaningful, personalized, and engaging connections with their prospects and students. Learn more at element451.com.